Is Liverpool's squad strong enough? I'm Emma Jones and I'm joined by Chris Pajak and Statman Dave to debate this question. Now, this video is sponsored by The Athletic, the place for the best coverage of your club with a world-class team of writers, including David Ornstein, James Pearce and Dominic Fifield. Visit theathletic.co.uk forward slash squawker to start a seven-day free trial and receive 50% off your yearly subscription. So it works out at just £2.50 per month. Now then, Chris, do Liverpool have enough squad depth to win an elusive Premier League title this season? Over to you. I think we do, but only if we don't get any injuries. Yeah. So I'm not sure that we... I think the answer might be no <laughs> uh, in that case. But look, Liverpool's first team is good enough to win the Premier League. It's whether those like number 12 to 15 are probably good enough for me. Um, I think City, you know, naturally have just got an incredible squad and they're able to sort of introduce players who might be on the fringes and stuff like that, whereas that's not something that Klopp does. Klopp likes to play his first 11 over and over and over again. We're reliant on the front three, I think. And if one of them goes down for a sustained period of time, then it will be difficult for Liverpool, I think. I think that's a really interesting sign in terms of injuries because Liverpool have been relatively front free, uh, fr injury free. Sorry, <laughs> with their <laughs> front three. Um, you know, you're looking at Mohamed Salah, missed one game in three seasons. You're looking at Firmino, 14 games in five seasons, and Mane, 15 games missed in four seasons. That can't be. That can't continue. Mm. Well, you say that, but Liverpool sign players that don't get injuries. And I think the most important stat when you're talking about football is games available for. And Liverpool are signing players that are available for a lot of games of football. You know, there's not many lads that we've signed now who do pick up a lot of injuries all the time. Naby Keita obviously has a little bit of an issue at the moment and has picked up a couple. But generally, Klopp signings and the signings of Michael Edwards and that analytics team don't pick up a lot of injuries. Well, on that, James Pearce wrote uh, in a recent article in The Athletic how key Andy Robertson is for Liverpool at both ends of the pitch. But Chris, what happens if he isn't available? James Milner goes to left back, maybe. <laughs> uh, we don't have, we don't have anyone. I think you know you can toss up between maybe Joe Gomez moves out there or Trent maybe if Gomez is to play the right hand side. But ultimately, I think it will be down to James Milner. We saw a couple of years ago he played an entire season there. Now he's not the attacking threat of of an Andy Robertson. He's not as good defensively as Andy Robertson. But then your second choices never are. Mm. Otherwise, they'd be your first choices. Yeah. You know, mm. it's, it's it sounds obvious, doesn't it? But for what he does and what he brings to the side and it's not just going forward and going back it's what he does around the community as well he's brilliant to you know around with liverpool fans and helping food banks and all that around liverpool and stuff and that's something that is massively important to me and a lot of liverpool fans um but also he's a leader on the pitch as well you know he, he sets the tempo in games or you know towards the end of games he'll go on a 50 yard run and and wind the clock down and stuff he's brilliant and he's a very very intelligent footballer so we've put together a few squad options, uh, potentially a few holes in that. So, Statman Dave, do you think Jurgen Klopp's going to be active in the January transfer window? I don't think he is. I think Liverpool have spent a lot of money recently and I think they are balancing their books, but he should be. I think that's the thing. If Liverpool want to go and win the Premier League, they need to sign an attacker, I'd say. You're looking at Salah, Firmino, Mane, the stats we mentioned before about injuries, that's dangerous. If one of those guys go down, goes down, is Origi um, going to be good enough to step on up on the, maybe the left-hand side? Probably not. I think, you know, if you're looking for players, Timo Werner's the guy that looks like he could play any of those positions and would be perfect for Klopp's style. His ability to, you know, break, to press. 55 goals in the last four Bundesliga seasons. The guy knows how to put the ball in the back of the net. And you take these work, working under someone like Julian Nagelsmann, who's worked with players like Serge Gnabry, cast aside by Tony Pulis, scored four goals against Tottenham back into you know a level of football that you'd expect him to be at. But that season of the Nagelsmann really changed him. So Timo Werner would be the guy that I'd sort of maybe add to the front three. Midfield, Chris, is an interesting one where you've got probably enough options there. Yeah, I think so. I think the thing that Liverpool fans are always talking about is, you know, we need a creative midfielder and, and the, the name that is always bandied around when we say that is someone to replace Phil Coutinho. I think the replacement's been done with the fullbacks, to be honest with yeah. you. I think with Trent and, and Robertson, you can see there, these are lads that Trent got 13 assists last season, Robertson got 12, you know, Trent's got goal and assists already this season. They, that's how we've replaced Phil Coutinho. We've 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 gone for a more industrious midfield, and it gives us more space for our fullbacks to go into. We overload a lot more now, uh, and we look to get the ball into Firmino's feet and play those little one twos and stuff. And one twos are the hardest thing in football to stop, aren't they? You know, especially when you've got quick lads like Salah and Mane over there. So I don't know whether we do need a. Uh, 
creative midfielder as such. I think Naby Keita could be the guy if he if he puts his injury yeah. troubles behind him because I think when he was at the Bundesliga, his passing st- his packing stats were off the charts. I mean, he'd t- take players out the game with dribbles, with forward passes, direct passes, progressive passes, all that type of stuff. So Naby's one of those players that I think he, he's I don't know the right word to describe him. He, he does things that footballers don't expect. Quite, he's, he's a bit enigmatic. He's a, he's a bit of an enigma, I suppose. And you know, he'll dribble in a way that most players are, un, are not used to seeing. Mm. So he can take a, a man out the game, and then suddenly a defender has to draw out of the back line, and then that will open the game up. So I think him, Oxley Chamberlain coming back. Uh, if it was spelt right, it would be lovely. Um, <laughs> uh, him coming back into the side as well. You know, he likes to take a bit of a shot from distance. I know that the trend around the Premier League over the last sort of five years is that there are less shots from distance because obviously the XG and everything is, is less likely to score. But Ox is one of those guys who can do something really well. And um, so I think I think we're all right there, to be honest. I think Dave's right. I think one for the forward three places as a backup would be where I'm looking at. And then you've got the question marks of, well, Klopp likes to develop players. I mean, Harvey Elliott, if his name was spelt right, that would be sound. Um, <laughs> hey, Chris, can we sign you as our proofreader in the transfer window? Is that all right? <laughs> I think he's a guy you want to get into the side yeah. at some point down the line. I mean, I've only, I'm not jumping the gun here. I've only seen him for 90 minutes in a, in a League Cup game, but he's better than Messi. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'd be looking to get him in at some point. Well, it's something that uh, James Pearce uh, said in the on The Athletic that, look, Harvey Elliott's made his, his first appearance at 16 years old. And he looks like a talent. He looks physically developed as well, which is an interesting one. So it is that nature versus nurture. Do you want to go out there and sign to Maverna who's ready to play and will make you competitive or you're looking more long-term? I think that's the big question for Klopp and which way he goes with that's going to be interesting. I think with fullbacks as well, there's young players, especially on, on the left-hand side, that if given the game time, could be at a really top level. So it's, it is going to be interesting to see how Klopp moves this team forward because he's going to have to. You know, I think... The thing that his Dortmund team got caught out with is he didn't evolve, but he's already evolved many times at Liverpool, so it's quite interesting to see him evolve as a manager as well. Absolutely. I mean, you, you just have to look at the left side there. You know, you've got Robertson, you've got Larucci and Lewis. These are young guys. Larucci's a really raw sort mm. of left back. He was playing on the left wing for the under 23s uh, for the most part for last season, but we've dropped him back and we've, we're have we trying to see if he can be that sort of attack and threat from fullback. So he's a guy that everyone's got their eye on at the moment. Brewster could be, you know, the way he's spoken about, could be a generational talent up top. She and he's playing. Well, don't well, that's the thing you need to be world class to play mm. Liverpool side now yeah. and that's the difficulty for young players coming in long gone are the days you know hopefully and, and we won't see them for a while where Liverpool back up is just rubbish because the first team aren't that good but they're getting games and now you just need to be a world class I mean all three of our forwards are world class that's a good situation to yeah. be in but it also brings those question marks Dave, yeah. of how do you get them game mm-hmm. time how do you develop a player who's not going to get a lot of minutes I think that's a big problem with, with football I think we've seen that with Phil Foden especially this year but look, the guy's not getting football. Ryan Sterling at the end of the season that Foden's played now would play like 4,000 Premier League minutes. Foden's on like hundreds, 400s. So it's one of those things where these guys need to play football or they won't reach their potential. So it is this sort of Liverpool mixing around, see if they can get these young players in. You know, Bruce is probably the guy if you're going to look at someone to really go for. So versus signing someone, James Madison is another player that's been banded around who could play in the front three as he's done for Brendan Rodgers or in midfield. Shoots from range as well. Something a little bit different, but you know, maybe it's not quite the right time for James Madison to, to move to Anfield. Yeah, I, I don't know where he'd fit in, to be honest, because it, is he a number eight in the traditional, what Liverpool mm. use now? I, I don't know. I think Liverpool have, the, the reason that we're doing so well is we've got a profile for each position and, and a type of player that's going to suit us in each of those positions. And if they're not quite, if you don't fit that profile, what's the point? You know, you're probably spending, could be 50 million on Madison mm. and, there's question marks over whether he's a number nine or whether, whether he played the number ten, eight. He's left wing, yeah, right wing. I think he is a ten probably. Yeah. I think naturally. Mm. Yeah. And that we don't play with a ten. So why mm. would you spend fifty yeah. million on a ten if you don't play with one? Waste the money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Literally, great player by the way. Mm. Just not right for Liverpool right now. Mm. Not to say that changes in a couple of years' time. Klopp did favour four two three one at Dortmund, you know, but he found something that works with the four three three and the full backs attacking high. Doesn't look like he's going to change that until someone stops him. We'd love to know your opinion in the comments as well. Do you think Liverpool's squad is good enough? Chris, tell the people at home where they can find more of you online. Yeah, so we're Redmen TV. You can find us on YouTube or on Twitter. It's the Redmen TV pretty much everywhere. Um, We cover Liverpool home and away. (laughs) Near and far through good times and bad times. And it's been absolutely fantastic recently. Thanks, Sarah. Yes, do exactly what it says on the tin, don't you? Well, Chris and Statman Dave, thank you so much for your opinions. Uh, They're also on this week's Premier League preview released on Thursday, where we preview 
all of the weekend's games and focus on the big clash at Anfield, Liverpool versus Leicester. Now, thanks again to The Athletic for sponsoring this video. Visit theathletic.co.uk forward slash squawker to start a seven day free trial and receive 50% off your yearly subscription. So it works out at just £2.50 per month. If you do that, you'll hear more from their world-class team of writers like David Ornstein and James Pearce. We'll see you next time on Squawker.